Let's talk about the double bonded system, butadiene, a conjugated system of alternating double bonds and its spectroscopic implications. So here's butadiene, C4H6. It has sp2 hybridized carbons and four p orbitals, one on each carbon. Those four p orbitals form four pi molecular orbitals. They'll have a bonding orientation and energy level diagram that looks like this. One, two, three, four pi bonding orbitals. The lowest two we'll call pi bonding orbitals, and the upper two we'll call pi antibonding orbitals. Now, four electrons from the p orbitals will fill these molecular orbitals, so we'll put those in, one, two, three, four, and we'll notice that the highest occupied molecular orbital is a HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbital, is a pi bonding orbital. The lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, or LUMO, is a pi star, or antibonding orbital. And it's common that transitions in these conjugated systems are a pi to pi star transition. In this case, for butadiene, that transition happens in the ultraviolet. Another example is the compound cisretinal, or rhodopsin. Now this is a light receptor in your eye. And when this absorbs a photon, that bond is weakened. I go from a pi to pi star, so the bond order here is reduced, and it allows this bond to isomerize, to rotate, and form this isomer of rhodopsin. So transretinol, or metarhodopsin. Those are two names for the same compound. This compound that's in your eye acts as a light receptor. And when this transition occurs, this isomerism, that triggers a chain of chemical reactions that allow you to detect light in your eye. This is actually the light recepting molecule in your eye. So a pi to pi star transition, very important in human vision. Highest occupied molecular orbital to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital in conjugated systems, often a pi to pi star transition.